Greetings. Greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus, He is Lord. He's above it all, and in Him we live and we move and we have our being. And yes, we greet you amidst all that's going on, all that's taking place on this earth at such a time as this where things are, if you were just going by your natural senses, if you were just going by the way things looked and appeared, um, boy, I tell you, you'd be struggling to figure out what to do right now. You'd be um, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine and every sleight of hand of men and every change and every twist and turn that takes place, you'd be on an emotional roller coaster right now. But for those that are grounded and rooted in Christ Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the Alpha and the Omega, the big beginning and the end, you, my brothers, you, my sisters, are rooted and grounded and situated on the rock who is Christ. And in Him, we live we move and we have our being and we continue and we persist in what we're going forward in knowing that there is no time knowing that this moment right now is the moment that you have and in this moment keep your eyes on Christ in this moment keep your focus on him and let everything else be what it is let everything else be what it needs to be you know you God will give you something to pray for, pray for it. Pray about it. You know, I, I'm, I'm amazed right now sometimes when there's just things going on in the world. I'll ask God what's going on and he'll tell me. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. You know, when, 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 you, when you're wondering about something, you want to know what's the situation with something in particular, you ask God and he tells you. You know, the other day I, I was... I was had a question about something that's going on um, politically. And um, I asked God. You know, I kind of went to sleep thinking about it. I asked God. He gave me the answer. I woke up. And sure enough, that's the headline. The headline is what it is that God showed me in advance. Now, why does that... Is that... That is not... In the time and the age that we live in right now, that's not a big thing. That's a normal thing because everything that's happening has already happened. All that's taking place right now has already taken place. And everything in reverse is, is part of, of it as well. So all that we're around and all that's there, God, what happens is when you tap into I am, when you tap into who you are in Christ, that, that connection, that revelation, that manifestation of who you are in Him, well, now, if everything is known to God, because everything's already happened for God, He already knows it all, so now you connect with Him, and now you know too. He'll show you, you know, you walk in that truth, and you won't follow another. You will just walk in the manifestation of what God shows you, because that's the way that He wants you to live. He doesn't want you to live being twisted and turned by all these charlatans, being tossed to and fro, being, um, you know, we you know, we talked about being aware but not distracted. He, The world wants to distract you. I tell you what, you try to focus on the things of God, you try to do the thing that God has put in front of you to do, and just watch and see how many distractions come up to try to take you off that course. <clears throat> you know, it will come from everywhere. So that's why you've got to discipline yourself. That's why you've got to, um, why you've got to separate yourself. You know, there's a, there's a reason that uh, so often in the scriptures that people would separate themselves, and they'd have to go out into the wilderness, or they'd have to to set themselves apart in some way. It's not because they wanted to be antisocial. It's not because they didn't like people. It's not because. Um, it's not because of anything that the reason that people would think it's because ultimately they want to hear the voice of God do what God asked for them to do and that's the way they're following God and he says look 
go out in the wilderness. Okay, I'll go to the wilderness because that's where God's sending me. So, you know, you're going to be, it's going to be more, you're going to be a little bit more isolated than other people just because, um, you know, eagles don't move in packs, okay? You know, we're a different type of, we're a different type of being on this earth. And <clears throat> just be okay with that. Now, God will know how to comfort your heart. God will know how to give you the desires of your heart. God will know how to be with you in the most amazing ways and give you fulfillment and peace in the things you do. But you can't gauge yourself by the way the world wants you to gauge yourself. See, the world wants you to look at things through their eyes, their priorities, their, their things that are important to them. The things of the world grow strangely dim to the follower of Christ because the things of the world don't really matter to the follower of Christ. For the follower of Christ, you've made the important decision already, which is what? To follow the Lord Jesus Christ in the way that He would show and reveal and manifest unto you. you know, who do men say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. There's that revelation on which the entire church of the living God is built. And off of that revelation, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You're above it all. You're the Lord. And um, so now that I know that, Lord, what do you want me to do? Master, what do you want me to do? King of kings, what do you want me to do? Because anything that you would ask of me is not too much. Anywhere you'd send me is fine by me. As long as I go with your presence and your spirit. That's what Moses said. Moses was given the option in the, in the wilderness with all of the things that were going on. And God would have had, um, he would have wiped out the nation of Israel at the time. Moses was given the option. And God said, I'll make of you a great nation. You know, I'm going to do this. And, 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 and God said, I, I'm not going to go with you guys into this promised land because... If I go, I might destroy these guys on the way. I'll send my angel ahead of you. But, uh, you know, these guys are taking me off. And what did Moses say? He said, Lord, he said, we can't move from here unless your presence goes with us. Because he knew. He said, that's the thing that, that, that makes us different. So, it is the very presence of the living God. And that's what, if that's what you want, and you're willing to live in the wilderness for indefinitely if that's where the presence of the living God is you'll, you'll have what you want if you want the presence of God then that's what you're going to get if you want the world and all that it is then you know you're going to pursue that you know that's what you're going to end up finding you may find a manifestation of it maybe you don't get all the goodies that you think you get but you're definitely going to get the world you're going to get a mouthful of it so, in the end, brothers and sisters, what you want, what we want, is a fulfilled life which comes from following Christ and doing the things that He gives us to do. Now, how that manifests in the day and the age that we live in, hey, all kinds of craziness is going on all around you, all over the world. you got to pray, you got to seek the face of God, let Him lead and guide and direct you, and leave it at that. Because there's so many things you can be involved with, so many things you can get um, activated about, upset about, involved in, engaged in. All that stuff is there and possible. But what? But you know, only God can give you a fulfilled life. Only God can can show you what to do in a day and a time like this. Only God can give you clarity amidst all the lies and the deceptions. Because the thing is, when God shows you, well, then that's it, that's the truth. When the world shows you, you know, it's got an ulterior motive and an agenda. When God shows you, that's it. Now, I believe that God has shown you things, just like He did with me recently, just to also give you more and more and more assurance of the way that he speaks, 
what he's doing with you so you have confidence in that because you're going to need that in time to come. You're going to need to be able to trust the way that God speaks to you. Not through others to you, but to you directly. You're going to need that. In knowing how God speaks to you and taking confidence in that, you can also now follow through and take up the direction that he gives you to take. Go forward in the thing that he gives you to do, knowing that he's sending you. You know, I know there's a lot of people that second guess. And you know what? It's okay to like be not completely sure about certain things. But if you go forward and you're still trusting God and you bring things before him and you say, okay, Lord, I'm not even completely sure, but I still put this before you and I'm going forward trusting you. If you need to be course corrected, he'll show you. But otherwise, go forward because you've left yourself open for how God will speak to you, how God can direct you. And if you do that, you give space for that. So if you don't do that, if you make up a predetermined agenda, a predetermined um, thing that you want to do, and you're just trying to make everything fit that, I tell you, that's a really rough place to be right now. <laughs> because in doing that, you, you are, you're not leaving room and space in an incredible, incredibly fluid time for how God will have, how God will do things. I mean, I tell you, things are changing and, and moving so fast, you can't even tell what a week is going to bring. Time's moving so quickly, you don't even know. So leave space for how God will do things, and leave space for how God wants to work with you and through you. Now, there is a challenge in this time. <laughs> And the challenge, in part, is to persist. To him who overcomes. You know, it's, it's to remain in Christ. You know, you're going to have... When Peter was walking on the water, you know, he, he was doing it. He had his eyes on Christ and he was doing it. And all these things came up around him to try to get his eyes off Christ. And he took his eyes off Christ and he began to sink. <clears throat> to keep your eyes on Christ amidst all that's going on is so crucial right now. Because all these things are there to try to get you to blink. You know, if tomorrow the world, the bulk of the world, went up in some sort of nuclear conflagration and you saw this, but you know you were not in an area that was directly immediately affected. What would you do? Would you pray? Would you trust God? Would you look to Him? To what it is that He has for you to do next? Or, you know, are you going to go some other direction? Are you going to go some other way? How are you going to manage that? When all of this stuff becomes real, how are you going to, what are you going to do with it? So, the, the challenge right now is going to be in the, in the line of, of persisting when so many will be falling away. A lot of people are going to fall away because their expectations weren't met. People set expectations that God had nothing to do with, and then when those aren't fulfilled, they turn their back on God. Isn't that a crazy thing? People have a misinterpretation of the Word. They bank everything on that. They expect that that misinterpretation is going to be fulfilled because, hey, you know, they bought into it. And buying into it is more important to people than the truth. They, the, the club and what the club says is more important than the reality. 
You know, it is a dangerous thing to put your life and all your hopes and all your expectations on a misinterpretation of the word. You know, I've, I've had windows in my own life where I thought something was one way and I was banking on that and it really was another way. And boy, I tell you, if you hold on to something and you think it's one thing but it's not and you go and you let that steer your life, you could go through a world of hurt holding on to the wrong thing. A world of hurt. It's like, I mean, it's just, you're holding on to a bucking bronco and you get a kick, but you believe. <laughs> Listen, there are things worth holding on to. The correct interpretation of what God said is one of them. But to, um, to miss the mark, and then to be holding on to things because, you know, that's your expectation. Because of pride. <clears throat> to be holding on to things because, you know, you've, you've just invested so much. How many people, when God told them to leave some of these institutions they call churches... And they stuck it out. They didn't leave because they've been there for 25 years. And their grandmother bought the chandelier and their uncle bought the piano. So they stayed in a dead place. God was calling them out to life and they stayed in a dead place. How many people have done that? Because in the end, there's still that lack of trust. There's still that, you know, that desire, which, hey, I get it. You want community. I understand. But not at the price of your soul. You want community, but not at the price of God's plan and purpose for you. You can be sitting in the same spot for nine years. And God would draw you out, but you said, no, I'm going to stay right here. fear that people go through within themselves and yet they don't realize just they don't even think it through listen our reality here who's here to stay here is there anybody that was here 120 years ago that's still well I should say 130 because there are some centennials out there okay is there anybody here that was here 140 years ago. Okay, there we go. No. Because they all pass through. They all transition. Not a soul came into this world to stay in this world. And you and I, brothers and sisters in Christ, that includes us as well. You know, we're here, but this is not our home. So while you're here... Where will you put your time? Where will you put your focus? Where will you put your energy? Where will you allow God to lead you and guide you? If it's anywhere that He wants, if it's anything that He wants, you're now in a great position because now He can use you. You know what? i tell you something. There, there's incredible gifts that are within you that just need to be activated by the free flow of the Spirit of God. And the free flow of the Spirit of God comes out of proper alignment with Him. When you're aligned with God the right way, all these things can flow. When you're misaligned, there's no flow, just like a pipe. If you've got a pipe that's out of alignment, nothing flows through that pipe. But if you've got a pipe that's in proper alignment, hey, the water can flow through there. Not, no obstruction whatsoever. So if you're in proper alignment, boy, I tell you, things can flow. So, spiritual, mental, physical alignment with the Spirit of the living God. Those things in place, you're in a spot where God can just make things just boom. Now, that's when... Now, now God can still do things in spite of you. 
but boy, you're giving yourself by your own response to what the Spirit of God is quickening you to do. You're giving yourself the best opportunity just to be in this right place where God could just flow through you. You want to do that. Because you might as well. I mean, why this, this halfway thing that people always want to do? Why this half measure that people always want to seem to, to, to engage in when they walk with God? They want to just have one foot in and one foot out. No need. Just go all in. Go all in and just let Him lead and guide you. With everything else taking place in the world, let it be what it is. When God has you to intervene, He'll show you. When He and listen, when you pray, boy, I tell you, that's that's the most powerful thing you can start with. Start with that, and then let God direct the rest after that. As you pray, and God will direct you from there. Oh man. Yeah, I know. I know it's a bit frustrating right now, guys. I know that you know we're we're in a we're in a it's a it's a turbulent time. You know, things are just all over the place. But when you trust and when you allow for the way that God's working and doing things in and through you, it doesn't matter if it's turbulent. You know, you just you just keep going. As much as you can, you just try to do right by people. As much as you can, you seek to be a blessing and a help. As much as possible, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. <laughs> That's how we live. That's the way we do things while we're here. And, you know, be there for your brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, God will put people around you that need you. They need the word that's in you. They need the support that God's equipped you to give. There's resources that God put in your hand to share. Do it. Do it. And listen, don't worry about the rest. Because there's going to be so many things that will just take care of themselves. You worrying about them is not going to even change anything. How often do people worry about things that they have no influence over, no control over, and no, that have no bearing or impact on God's instruction for them in the first place? A lot of people do that. But that's why you just want to pray. If something, if God quickens you, then, then there's something that He wants you to pray about. But pray about it. But otherwise, there's a lot of things that, listen, they're not... It's, it's not going to be something that you even need to engage in because it's outside of the purview that what God wants you to focus on. He's given you assignments. He's given you things to do. Do those. You know, pray. Jesus had told the disciples, they're all, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, the three that followed him, he said, you know, could you not pray one era, one hour? You know, all these guys were talking about being right there with them. Got your back, Jesus. You know, all of this, and then just go forward that same night. We can't stay awake with him one hour. When he was in deep distress. So, you know, just do the things, the simple things that are in front of you to do. Just do those. Ah, and trust. Yeah, we, you need the Spirit of God to help you to make good decisions and good choices. Because there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way that seems right to people right now, but boy, I tell you, a lot of people are going to die by going their own way. At the same time, the commandments and instructions of God lead to life. And 
that life is something that's available to you right now. So, in the time that we live in right now, God is having his people shine bright. God's having his people move forward. We're doing the things that God wants us to do. We're, we're in an incredible season. Everything's being shifted. Everything's changing. Things that were the old way that everything always has been is no longer. Excuse me. We're not going back to the way things were, people. That's for sure. So continue to follow Christ and see where he takes us and where he leads us. He's going to lead us and guide us into all truth and into the manifestation of his plan and his purpose for his body of Christ on the earth. All right. God bless you guys. Love you. Drop us an email, faithmixergmail.com. Say hi. We'll catch up with you again sometime really soon. God bless you. Bye.